make sure of safety checks, safety glasses, right? Um, this year, everybody's gonna get their own pair, just like last year, but it's super important that this year you hold on to them and um, you know you have them with you. Um, we can't share safety glasses at this point anymore. Um, so everybody's gonna get a brand new pair, and um, you know it's gonna be your responsibility to you know hold on to them, keep them keep them clean, keep them safe, right? So today we're taking a look at the drill presses. We have four, obviously. Um, but there are two different models, right? We have our tabletop models and our floor standing models, which are a lot bigger. Just because that one's smaller, that one's bigger, doesn't mean that they operate any different, right? A drill press is a drill press. What is a drill press? Right, pretty much. What do we use a drill press for? Okay. All right, drilling holes, yes. We're gonna drill holes. <laughs> Perfect, drilling holes, right? Um, yes, the drill press is pretty much a stationary hand drill. Like we use the cordless drills or a quarter drill. Um, it's just a lot more powerful. You could do a lot. Um, you could do some different things with a drill press than you, you could with a, um, a portable drill, all right? but. There's no difference between the tabletop model and the floor standing model, right? They all have the same parts. Some are just a little bit smaller because of the size of the machine, but they all work exactly the same way. All right, so um, I'm gonna, we're gonna take a look at the floor standing model. It's just bigger and easier to see. Um, so some of the main parts, and we looked at those in the, uh, machine diagrams slides. So just like every other machine, this part here, down here is called what? Table. Table, right? Now, we know that on the left side here in the back, there's a little set screw. And on the right, there's a crank that allows me to adjust the table height. Right now, why might I need to adjust the table height? For what? Right, here's this piece of pine. What's that? Yeah, exactly. You have to adjust it just like you adjust the bandsaw blade guard to the height of the material. You need to adjust the table right, to the height of the material depending on the type of drill that you have, right? So if I was gonna drill in the end grain of this piece of pine and I put this down here, obviously, if I zoom in, when I get a little bit closer, Right, that height needs to be adjusted. I can't drill like that because the drill bit's two inches lower than the material sitting on the table. All right, so I could crank this down or up to adjust the height. <clears throat> so I'm gonna raise this up. Just so I'm above the material, just above it, good. And then what do I need to make sure I do next with the table? Make sure it's steady. Yeah, so what do I have to do? I have to, on the left side, I did what? I have to re-lock it, right? I have to re-tighten the set screw. Just turn it like three quarters of a turn clockwise. Now I lock the table and it's not gonna move. Right, a lot of people forget to lock it, they adjust it, they turn the machine on, this vibrates, and then the table moves side to side, and then, um, you know, that's not, that's not using it safely. All right, so I got the height set, so we get the table. Obviously this here, just like every other machine, has a similar setup here. What's this do? Power switch, right? On the right side, 
I raise and lower this part here, which is called what? What holds the drill, the drill bit in? This big one, this big part here. It's got, it's like the claw, like the claw machine. Psh, grabs the drill bit with two, with three jaws. What's that called? Anybody remember? What's this part called? It's an important part. It's in, on a drill press, on a hand drill, cordless drill, power drill. Somebody's nickname. Anybody remember what this is called? Called the chuck. the chuck. Correct. It's called the chuck. Right? That's where the drill bit gets put into, right? And the chuck, we need to loosen and tighten the chuck with the chuck key. Right? All four drill presses have a chuck and they're keyed because they're very large and we need to tighten those down. Um, our hand drills and cordless drills are keyless. If anybody remembers operating them, there's no key. We don't have to tighten it with a, with a key. We can tighten it with our hand, loosen and tighten it. All right, so the chuck key, it should always be on the table here in the tray. All right, should we ever leave that chuck key in there? No. No. All right, we turn this machine on right now, that chuck key is going to fly out like a bullet. All right, and you got to make sure because I could have this turn to the back. Somebody can leave the key in it. And if I walk away and I have a pretty big drill bit in there, it's going to be hard if I zoom in. All right, it's not exactly clear. If I turn this back this way, All right, and if you're not really paying attention, you don't really say it. So you got to inspect and make sure nobody leaves this chucky in there. It's very important. All right, so to take it out, I can go to any one of these holes, obviously make sure it's off, and I'm going to turn down counterclockwise until it loosens up. Take it out, right? Now, we're going to take a look. I just took one drill bit out, but we have three major drill bits that we typically use in here for woods, plastics, composites, right? No metal. These bits are not designed for metal. They're specialty bits. Um, we don't typically keep them out because we don't typically drill through metal, right? But there's three different types and there's three different names for them. Everybody knows this one. It's the most common. Anybody remember? Twist drill bit, right? Everybody says, oh, get this is a drill bit. Yeah, it's a drill bit, but technically it's called a twist drill. What part actually cuts the hole? Down here or up here? The tip of the bit. The tip of the bit, right? And if I bring this in close, right, you should always see a little point to the tip. If this was like flat and knocked off, that drill bit is no good. We have to toss it out. So the tip is what creates the diameter of the hole, right? And these two cutting edges on the left and the right, they're in the shape of a cone at 60 degrees that drive into the material. Now, what are these things on the side? What do they do? What are the, what's that called? They get rid of the material out of the hole. Anybody remember what they're called? It's also the name of a instrument, like a small little silver one. Flute, Flute. yes, good. They're called flutes. All right, and all drill bits have some sort of fluting to remove material because if there wasn't any and I was drilling into material creating creating sawdust and scrap without ejecting the material out of the hole I'd be drilling through the same waste material and eventually it would burn up and probably catch fire right or melt to nothing if you're drilling through plastic right so every bit has some sort of fluting and this just allows to remove the material. And it, the flutes are a little sharp because it wants to break the material up even more. But they don't actually drill the hole. They keep the hole nice and round as it's pushing through the material. All right, so that's the twist drill. 
This one here, I remember, remember the name of this one. There's a variety of sizes, a lot larger diameters. This one here is how many inches? Five eighths, right? Yeah. These are marked. It's got a sharp point, and then our two cutting edges are here to the left and to the right, and they're open and at an angle so that the wood chips fly out of the hole. Anybody remember the name of this? It's also a type of shovel. I always use this example. It's not a flat shovel. What's the other kind of shovel with the point? Anybody Spade. Know? Spade shovel, yes, cool. So this is called a spade bit. And these could come, we have these all the way up to an inch and a half and two and a quarter inches. Spade bit um, will allow you to kind of drill holes a little bit faster than most other bits, right? And they make, this is a six inch one. You can get spade bits, guys, that are 24, 36, 48 inches long. Think about a wall, right? A typical wall that's studded. Right, you plug things into where in your wall? Where do you plug your Chromebook charger, your phone charger, and wall at? An outlet, right? So inside the wall, what's what's in there that connects the outlet to get power? Wire, right? So an electrician probably has a series of these, and some of them have them you know, three foot long so that if they have to run wires through a wall, right, they can drill through multiple studs at a clip if there's no knockouts, right? A typical wood stud, a two by four, is not gonna have a knockout like we looked at with steel studding, right? So to kind of make things go faster and more efficient, you could drill through multiple studs at once, right? So spade bits, um, to come in very long, long lengths. All right, then the last one, it's got a weird name. Anybody remember this name? It's a weird name. It's got a very sharp tip here or point, two cutting edges to the left and to the right at an angle and they chip out. This one's about seven eighths of an inch. We got these all the way up to inch and a half, inch and three quarter. All right, it's called the Forzner bit. And what's cool about a Forzner bit is that um, it'll give you a nice, clean, flat bottom hole, all right, with just a small center point. The spade bit will also give you a flat bottom hole, but a, lar a lot larger center point because it has a really sharp, long pointed tip. So you'll get a little hole in the center of a spade bit hole that you're drilling. All right, and then if we go back to the twist drill, just by the shape of it, if you only drilled halfway through material, what's the shape of the bottom of the hole gonna look like? Is it gonna be flat? Or at an angle? Just look at the tip. All right, if I only drilled halfway through, and some of you may have done this before. What's the bottom of that hole look like? Is it nice and flat? No. No, it's going to be actually angled, just like the, the way the tip of the drill bit is. And that's how you can really tell through the different drill bits is where the point is and then the two cutting surfaces. It'll tell you whether it's going to be flat bottomed or have some sort of angle or taper. All right, the best flat bottom hole is the Forzner bit. It's going to give you the cleanest, smoothest flat bottom hole. Now, where might we use the Forzner bit for? If we would have to, maybe what we call counter bore, like a bolt. Anybody have a deck at home? If you look at a post on a deck, it may have a giant bolt, but it's not sticking out the surface of the wood. It's actually flush with it. We would use a Forzner bit that's a little bit larger than the diameter of the bolt and just drill maybe a third of the way through the material so that when we put the, the bolt through, the head of it's nice and flush and it's not sticking out. And we'd use a Forzner bit and we could even use... Yeah, exactly. You remember from, from middle school, we did the game pieces because we used the spade bit 
with a flat bottom hole. You can also use a spade bit um, to do what we call counter bores. All right. So those are the three types of bits that we typically use on a daily basis for, for drilling through material. All right, so I'm going to I have to lower this a little bit. It's a little high. So I'm going to drill through. I'll set this in. Now, remember, every drill bit has a specific area of where it gets inserted into the drill press and into the chuck so that the three jaws of the chuck clamp down evenly. All right. Spade bit, it's got a different type area here. There's a, <clears throat> there's like a hex head here for the chuck to grab onto. And then the twist drill, there's a little bit smaller diameter at the top that you know where it goes into the chuck because you can insert drill bits a lot further, but then if you went too far and you had the jaws of the chuck biting on the flutes here, the drill bit would sit in sideways and you turn it on and it would wobble, vibrate, and it may fly out. So it's important that um, you fasten that in the chuck to the specific area on the top of the drill bit. All right, now if we take a look at it, something a lot smaller, like this really small, like eighth inch twist drill, right, it's all the same diameter. Um, but what you notice is this has a coating and typically like the coating will come halfway up on the top of the drill bit here. And you'll know that's how far you should insert it into the chuck because believe it or not, this being so small, I can bring this all the way up into the chuck and that's not gonna work properly. It's probably gonna break and fly out something this small. Yeah, yeah for small, and, and that's a good point, Emmett, for a small, um, for smaller holes, especially like pilot holes, if we have to screw something in and it's a hard material, we'll drill a pile hole, we would use a small drill bit and a hand drill. It's not necessary to use, you know, bring over half a project and drill pilot holes on here. All right, the drill press is for more, you know, larger diameter holes um, and other types of boring that you couldn't do with uh, a typical hand drill, all right? Especially if you had really thick, hard material, you needed to drill a perfectly straight hole, we'd want to do it on here, not with a hand drill, right? You're not going to get a perfectly straight hole no matter how level you, you hold it. The drill press, completely perpendicular, it's going to give you a hole straight through at 90 degrees, no problem. All right, so I loosen the table, lower it a bit, bring this up in the chuck, tighten it by hand, and I like to give it a little spin, and I can tell right away if it's, if it's at an angle in there, it's gonna, it's gonna look wobbly when I spin it, and it's not. So then I can go to any one of the holes, turn this up towards the ceiling, about a quarter turn, All right, lock that in, set my height, Just above the material, square the table up, lock the table back up. All right, then I could turn it on. All right, I don't hear any crazy vibration or shaking. It means the drill bit's in correctly. All right, now, we know that our tables here have these, these wood backers because the actual tables are, are metal and we don't want to drill through them. All right, so typically um, <clears throat> I'd like to put a piece of scrap wood down even on top of the table to protect it as well even though we have this this wood backer but now I have to readjust this. So let me loosen this up. All right, and I could slide this over. Now, to not worry about holding the, our scrap piece or our, our, our additional backer board, I can use one of these, which is what? What's this called? Clamp, right? I could clamp down my scrap backer, right? I could also clamp down my material. 
if I had it all lined up, and then I don't have to worry about holding it. Right? So the clamps are important um, when we're drilling really hard materials or we're drilling very large diameter holes so that you don't have to worry about holding it with your hand and um, you slipping and then the material getting caught and, and whipped around. Okay? Smaller holes and, and, and you have enough material to hold um, your hand far enough away, it's okay to just use a piece of scrap below it and, and hold it with your hand. But if you don't feel comfortable, you can always use a clamp to clamp your material down. So I'll turn this on. All right, then I'm going to grab the lever to raise and lower the, the chuck. All right, when we're raising and lowering this, this is actually called the quill, the shaft that the chuck's attached to. All right, so I'm going to come down, little chunks at a time, and move it up and down. I don't want to jam this all in at once because I'll burn the material up. I could damage the drill bit. Little chunks at a time. All right, I'm going to go almost all the way through, but you can see with the Forstner bit, this, this hole here is a nice flat bottom hole with just a tiny center point from the point of the drill bit. And I'll go just till I feel, you'll feel it kind of, the pressure release a bit when you get through the back side of the material into your backer board. All right, now I've got a nice clean hole front to back. And that's the other reason why we want to use a piece of scrap below the material and um, on the, our table cover here. Because the table here is beat up from, you know, people drilling through it, that's what happens. But without another backer, if I didn't have a backer here, and I'm gonna switch drill bits real quick. I'm gonna put a twist drill in. All right, so what's the problem here? What do I got to do? Is that going to work? I got a lower table, right? So I'm going to loosen this up. Lower this. Open this up till I get it in the chuck. Up on the top. Hand tighten that. I'm going to reset my height. That looks pretty good. Lock the table. All right, so I'm going to take my piece of scrap backer away and drill through this real quick. Show you why we need to use a backer. All right, the top of the hole is obviously clean, but if you take a look at the back, there's a lot of kind of blowout here. And that's because there's no smooth kind of scrap backer and the drill bit's going through an area where it's open. So the material is just blowing out from the back. There's nothing applying pressure to it. All right, so when I have a backer that's nice and smooth, flat, and clean, and I don't drill through it. Nice small chips. All right, I'm gonna stop for a second now. It's probably hard to see, but inside there with the twist drill, that bottom of that hole is, is tapered at an angle at 60 degrees. All right, now take a look at that compared to these other two. Right, that's what we want to see, and that's why we put our piece of scrap backer board even on top of our table that already has a wood, a wood top. Right, that's really just protecting the metal. We always want to try and use our scrap backer board to ensure we get clean holes through the material. Right. All 
when we're done with the machine, we want to make sure that everything's cleared off. A lot of people wind up leaving drill bits on the table, right? The chuck key on the table. No, we want to make sure it's cleared off just like every other machine. Drill bits go back where they go. Chuck key back in the tray. I can also clean this table off so it's nice and clear so that the next person that's ready to use it, it's all ready to go. Um, do you have to take the drill bit out? No, we typically don't have to take them out um, unless the next person needs to change it. They'll do that as they see fit, all right? But we can typically leave, leave the drill bits in. I'll take it out for now, though. Any questions?